Hi everybody, welcome to Working Horse with Jim. I'm Jim, and I am going to be telling you about a problem that I had yesterday. So yesterday I was planning on working these two horses, my Belgians. This is Bill and Lady. And so I chose to put the other, my other four horses out in the barnyard, and I was going to work these guys, and then I ended up not working them. And so at lunchtime, I realized I'm not going to work them because I had other stuff to do. So I decided I'm going to put them out in the pasture into the, the further place where we put the horses. So I actually let them all the way around the building one at a time and put it in the pasture. Bill, as soon as I let him out there, he was just really feeling his oats. He was just kicking up his heels and running and running around. And I wasn't concerned about it because I expected that to happen. But anyways, last night when they came in, I didn't even notice it when they came in. But then I always come back out around 6.30 to water my horses for the last time during the, at night. And as I backed him out, I thought there was something odd. And then when I let him go to go to the water tub, he was noticeably limping on his right front leg. After you get the water tub, I realized there's no shoe on that front foot. So what must have happened is at some point in the afternoon, he probably got into the mud and his front foot kind of stuck for a second and his hind foot came up and actually stepped on his front shoe. And then he jerked his front foot and the shoe came off. Now, these are just assumptions. I'm just assuming this is probably what happened. He might have got stuck in the mud bad enough to actually pull his shoe off, but more than likely he needed to have more than that to have that happen. The shoes were all tight yesterday. Um, so anyways, the shoe fell off. Now, I'm pretty confident that there's nothing wrong with his hoof. We're gonna check in a minute to see if I can see anything wrong there, but I don't think there is. I looked last night and I don't think there's anything wrong with his front foot. I believe it's a muscle issue. I believe when he pulled his front foot, he probably pulled a muscle or something like that. Now, a lot of people would possibly even have the vet over or just give it a thorough inspection, which I will do, but also would possibly put, um, put something on his foot or his leg. But the problem with when you have a lameness like this, you don't know what muscle they pulled. You're just totally guessing. I've also noticed over the years, when you have situations like this, and I don't want to say this so that you're um, neglecting your horse by any means, but so many times over the years in this situation, I have noticed that you get the shoe back on the horse, as long as you don't see anything physically wrong with the hoof that might have happened, and then get the shoe back on, and usually within a couple days, they're over their lameness. They just walk out that muscle a strain that they had and don't work them for a few days, but just allow them to go out into the barnyard and get their leisurely exercise, and they almost always walk out of it. I guess I'm saying this is to, so to, um, I guess we've talked quite a bit about talking more about sustainability, and that's a big word in, in today's society right now. You know, people are talking about um, back to the earth type of thing and, and being more sustainable. And so I just want to explain that a horse in an injury like this has so often just healed on its own. I'm just saying, it's just, we know the good Lord has made our bodies that way and just same with a horse. We are made, our bodies are such that we will actually, a lot of issues, we will just heal ourselves or the, our body will heal it. And so there's one huge sustainability that I've not yet to see a tractor that's broke down or has something wrong with it. I've never seen a tractor heal itself. Um, so anyways, I guess I'm promoting the horse right now, but uh, that's okay. Um, and so, yeah, sometimes, so often, they will heal themselves just like we are, will heal ourselves. And, and, you know, the good Lord made it that way. And so I'm, I'm so thankful for that. And, uh, and just the sustain sustainability of using horses. So I'm going to back Bill out, and this is, he was a little bit lame this morning, but not quite so bad. This is after lunch, and I'm going to see how he's acting, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up putting a shoe right back on his hoof. Now the, the hoof in question is this further right one. The shoe is falling off, has fallen off. So we will back him out, and he's probably want some water again, and then we'll put that shoe on. Bye. Bye. 
Bye. I am not seeing or did not see that much of a lameness as he walked up the floor. Uh, maybe a little bit, but of course, just by not having a shoe on makes them, you know, a little bit um, uneven, so they tend to be a little bit lamer. But last night he was quite lame on that hoof. As soon as he's done drinking, I'm going to tie him over here and we'll pick that hoof up and look it over. Oh, now right there, you could surely see that lameness. Did you notice it, Brenda? Yes, I did. Now, there again, muscles are a funny thing. Get him. He does seem to be favoring it though right now. Yeah. Let me gra grab my hoof knife and we'll look at it right here. So as I lift his foot up, what I'm going to be looking for is just anything abnormal. I'm going to just go clean the dirt out of it and see if there's anything abnormal about this hoof. There's not much dirt in it. Come here, Bill. Come here, Bill. Ew. Not much dirt at all. I'm hitting it to see if maybe there's some points where it's sore. There's actually a special tool you use to do this. But just even my hand, if it was really bad, could make a difference. But I'm seeing nothing that could show me that there's something wrong with that hoof. So I'm going to just trim it up and throw on another shoe. I used to do all my shoeing, I've told you before, and now I have a Amish guy that does the shoeing, and I'm so thankful for that um, because I just have too many things to do, and that's one less thing I'd have to do. But I know how to shoe. Um, and it's so nice to be able to know that. So I'm just saying this also just to, as somebody new starting out, Whenever you can learn any portion of the, of the things that you need as a horse owner, um, the farther ahead you are. Even if you don't always do them yourself like shoeing, if you are able to throw a shoe back on a horse that lost this shoe, you will be so beneficial because you can't always get the shoer there when you want them there. So it's just a really good thing to learn. So I'm going to put him in the stocks and we'll see if we can slap a shoe on there. Hey, okay, got the shoe all on, and uh, hopefully that'll solve my problems. Well, let's take them out and see. Like I said, just by having a shoe off, they're kind of offset. They're half lame just from that. Oh, but there was definitely more lameness than just that. But even now by having the shoe on, it's helping some. And I think in a couple days, come here. In a couple days, he'll be 100%. It seems to bother most when he's turning. Come here, come here. Oh, but it does seem to bother him very little or a lot less than it was. So he'll go outside in the barnyard for today. He still needs his exercise, so he's going to go outside and get some exercise. And hopefully he won't do anything stupid like he did yesterday. But we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes and I'll keep you updated on the progress. 
Well, it's still too wet out there. I thought maybe the last couple of nights been cold, the ground would be frozen, but it's it's not. I'm just gonna spread one more load of horse manure. I was gonna start cleaning my heifer pen, but there's no way. So I just had to do one more load of manure and then we'll try and get the corn on that wagon. Okay, sounds good. Jim's coming around with the Pertrons. This is our little wagon we use to um, keep corn in. And uh, what we do is fill it up over at the corn uh, crib and then Jim hauls it over and it sets it right outside the door here for me and it's a lot easier for me just to fill buckets and take it into the um, well, I was feeding it to the pigs when we had pigs, and they've now gone to the butcher and uh, to the Ooh. young cattle that we have. Do you want to say anything about this wagon? Yeah. Is this a wagon or a trailer? This is a trailer. The trailer has two wheels, right? And it's heavy. Well, it's built pretty sturdy, isn't it? Go the heads. Okay. Gladly. Boys. Back up, honeys. Oh. Grab the heads and back up when I tell. Ready? Back up about six inches. Oh. 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 Okay. Oh. Can you grab a shovel for us? Yeah. I don't think this corn camp crib can take too much running into it. I don't think I hit it too hard. Hand me the shovel, please. A lot of snow in here. I know. A lot of kernels in here, too. Well, just leave them because I can clean it out when it gets unthawed. Yeah. We feed the deer. Yeah. As if, as if they haven't taken their share. I think I see, see some animal tracks in here. That looks like a deer. Well, we better make sure Levi gets print. this one for next year. Yeah. Still got a fairly decent supply. It's good to have a little bit go through the summer with if you want it for keep the cows outside for a while. Yeah, the grandkids love to feed the cows corn when they come up. I feel pretty good with leaving the horses stand without being tied at this point. Well, I don't like to have them not tied, but that's one reason why I spread a couple of them more. They're a little tireder. And if something happens, I can, of course, holler to them. But I can also run it through and grab the lines, keep the lines always go on the Yeah. Were you looking to see if Ken was freaked out by that when you threw it on? Yep. Yep, that's our Ken. You never know what he's going to be freaked out over. Looks like there's some good to pick out for the horses, too. Okay, good enough. Hey. 
So the reason I'm putting this piece of plywood back here is the deer will actually climb right up in here and see like corn. They're stealing so much from the outside, they don't need to come up here and get an easy feed. If they're going to get some, they might as well earn it. Yeah. Okay, let's head it down there and we'll be done. Now we got a problem. What? Okay, we're in some of a pickle here right now. This is a heavy trailer empty and there's no way I'm gonna grab it full and lift it up. So fortunately my pen came my pin came loose. Um, so if I could just get something underneath the tires to block it a little bit. If I snapped out of here fast, it should drop right down in those blocks. So I just put a tire in front of that wheel. Try to be safe about it, but just hold pressure on this, Brenda. Hold pressure on it. To go backwards, as if you're pushing it backwards, and we're going to go ahead. I cut that. Oh, Perfect. slick as can be. Okay, um, now Brenda just has to get it covered up with plastic and tires to hold the plastic and I'm going to put the horses away. Come boss, come boss. I love to hear them crunch. It's fun to watch cows eat. Well, thanks for coming along today. Hope you enjoyed our day on the farm and with the horses and we'll see you next time.